Hey guys, Dylan Tommy here. It's about that time again for a green room update. Uh, I haven't cruised these tanks in several weeks and I'd like to show you guys what I've been up to. Uh, the tanks continue to evolve, uh, the colonies continue to grow out, and I'm really having a blast here in the green room. So uh, without any further ado, I'm just going to cruise as I do and show you what's going on. Uh, in the 55, could definitely use a little trimming, but what I've recently tried to do is create habitat. Uh, it's been part of my fish keeping method, is to create you know dense vegetation for these fish to, uh, to thrive in. Uh, I find it's beneficial to not only their growth, but uh, their behavior. Uh, if you take a look down in there, I have several open areas, uh, you know, mixed in with this hedgerow uh, to, like I said, create habitat. And uh, really digging it. The 55 needs a trim right now, but uh, the system itself is golden, and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, if you guys remember, I told you that I plan to add several guppies to this tank, several large fancy guppies from my guppy breeding colony and uh, my uh, guppy grow ups. So I've, I've recently started to add a couple of fish to the tank and you can see there, I would call them sub-adults. Check out these guys, they just started to color up, but um, having them here in a larger tank will really increase their finage and their growth potential. So I'm happy to get them in here. Uh, as soon as possible and I'll show you some of the some of the other guppies that I'm growing out but uh, some of the most fancy ones the most beautiful color var variations I can choose uh, will be the males that end up in this tank and uh, eventually I hope to uh, really stock this tank out with some cool fancy color variations but I'll continue to cruise and uh, take a quick quick stop with the crevetsis because this colony has been thriving for some time. And as you guys know, there's several different spawns, both albino and normal crebensis. And what I've done recently uh, with the scape is open it up. I've really trimmed a lot of the dense vegetation down. I've actually removed some rocks and uh, changed the scape a little bit just to open it up uh, for more water volume for these larger fish. They're really becoming some decent specimens here and uh, I want to give them more room to grow. Uh, we're working with a, a 20 gallon here and there's about six adult crebensis in this tank and three sub-adults, which are actually the normal crebensis. These albinos are the large mature males and they look great. Let's see if we can cruise. They've all find their hiding spots and uh, they're very comfortable in this system. But I did want it to open it up a bit, and I have. I pulled out a lot of plantage and uh, a lot of the floating vegetation that used to kind of drape across the top of the tank was removed. But this, th this colony's thriving. It's been thriving for over two years now. Here's the female over here. She's coming right over. They've recently had some maintenance so uh, the water is crystal and I actually think it, it's stimulating a little bit of breeding behavior because she is very, very red here, the pelvicromus pulcher. She is uh, pretty much ready to spawn. Here's one of the sub-adults. These normal crebensis are actually gaining some size. They're looking pretty good. The last time I had shown them, they, they didn't have very decent size on them, but they're... Uh, they're growing very nice. And I know there's another generation in here of some albinos. They spend a lot of time up in the vegetation. Uh, you'll see them picking the debris off some of the higher leaves. But I don't see the tiny albinos right now. We'll keep cruising. I've had a blast keeping the crevetsis. The colony's been thriving for, like I said, two years and it just continues to grow out. And now to the guppy colonies, because I've been spending a lot of time with the guppy. Uh, isolating males, trying to keep my breeding females in uh, this particular tank here, and managing a lot of the, you know, the ecology of these planted tanks to keep them densely packed vegetative tanks um, that support, you know, breeding behavior and uh, life.
But this is what I have for my breeding guppies right now. Is a tank with only three males. And the three different males have vastly different color variations. We get this guy who's black and yellow, has some neon in him. We got a long fancy tail red here. It's typical feeding time for them now, so they're doing a lot of uh, swimming. But the last male, the only other male I decided to keep in this tank with all these breeding females is one of the younger generations, and he looks a little different than both of those males. Um, if I can find him, I don't seem to see him at the moment. But there's three breeding males in this tank, and uh, I've recently started to remove a lot of the younger generation and just keep the large males and the females to breed and when they spawn I remove as many of the young fry that I can catch out of here. I mean it's a really cool tank to, to have them grow out in with all the dense moss and baby tears. Uh, but it's just been easier for me to remove those fish from the tank and uh, I've been putting some of them down here. This tank itself has become its own little breeding colony. I told you that my original male uh, is still continued to breed and uh, a lot of the offspring that are in this tank is from his spawns that have happened in this tank. But uh, this tank initially was meant to just house uh, the younger generation of guppies as they grew out. But I have some larger females in here and um, some sub-adults. So my process has been as they grow and as they thrive and as the males color up, um, I've been selecting some of the, the more colorful, pretty much all the adult males that uh, I don't choose to continue their line and I put them in the 55. And this is another tank that I've been doing it in. We have a much younger generation in this tank. And this tank actually needs a trim, but uh, I've been spending a lot of time uh, working on the habitat in here too. This is a, a, a well-scaped tank nowadays with the moss and uh, all the vegetation here. But let's take a look at the, the colony of young sub-adults and juvenile fish. Because there are a lot. I just say there's probably about 50 or 60 fish in this tank. It doesn't seem so much with what you see in the water column, but what you see in the water column are all the larger sub-adult fish and some of the younger ones will be, you know, deep in the moss and in the thick vegetation. Well, I don't see any just now. This tank also has a large colony of um, red cherry shrimp that do very well in this tank there. They're actually huge. These guys are beasts now. and they dig the moss too. But this is the other colony I have of guppy to try to increase my chances of um, putting a lot of fancy tail males in the 55 and really creating a spectacle in that tank of large color variations of uh, many different uh, species of fancy guppy, or at least the species that I've bred. But there's an update on that tank, and they continue to grow out. Hopefully we can catch some of the prettier males that I've added to this tank. I did add five of them over the last three weeks, because they've been uh, actually fairly difficult to catch in a uh, in these uh, densely packed tanks. But um, these are some of the younger ones. This guy's got great color, red and yellows. But that's just two of them. Let's see if we can catch another. I know they spend a lot of time deep in the foliage and I've tried to create overhangs and uh, pockets where they can kind of 
Oh, there was one. He was one of the red guys, I believe. A quick look at my plans for the, the guppy colony. And the rams are still in here. I don't have any plans to do anything with the rams except for uh, watch them grow out as beautiful as they are. And continue maintaining this habitat. And we can quickly duck over here. This tank's kind of just for fun. Uh, I had showed you that I threw a lot of moss in here and I've used the moss in several different tanks in the Paludarium and uh, actually in the Brashardi tank too, which I'll, I'll show you in just a minute. But uh, recently I threw a bunch of clippings of Ludwigia in here just because I had some nice stems that were uh, growing a little too tall for the Paludarium and growing a little too tall uh, for that other guppy tank. So I had trimmed them and uh, like I said, just put them in here for the fun of it. And it looks pretty cool. I let that tank grow out. Not too sure what I want to keep in there. Although I, I recently had plans of maybe keeping some uh, different types of morphs of shrimp both in this tank and possibly in the Paludarium. Maybe some crystal reds or, uh, or some blues or another variation or morph. But like I said, lots of stuff going on in the green room. Uh, this little viv continues to grow out and still no habitat. I really want a frog in here. As, as much as I want it, uh, I'm so apprehensive about doing it just because I spend a lot of time managing and manicuring the system to, uh, to look the way it does. And uh, I think adding uh, a habitat or rather an inhabitant uh, could throw off um, the system itself. Uh, it's fragile, probably one of the most fragile uh, vivs I've ever managed. Uh, and I don't know if it's because of the volume or the species in here, but um, I think adding uh, anything too quickly uh, might throw off my chances for, for the success of the entire system. But uh, a quickly update that uh, all this Hermantheus, all these baby tears, this immersed form has really done an incredible job at carpeting across this, uh, this little platform here. And uh, the Pelia, the Depressa, is, is, is kind of climbing, you know, up the top, which uh, I dig. I keep them on the, on the left and the right hand side so they don't block out too much of the light, which is uh, exactly what they're doing in the Paludarium. The Paludarium uh, is completely overgrown with a lot of that terrestrial Pelia depressa. And uh, we'll pop in there real quick too. It's actually dusk in the Paludarium. And I'd actually like to do an update someday where I have all full full lights on. You guys haven't seen it with its, uh, with its brights on recently. But uh, as you can see, all the vegetation is really doing well. All the Pelia depressa growing on, all these platforms, these bromeliads growing fantastic in this system. I told you about the new pups that I had growing off this plant and uh, that pup right there is probably twice the size of its mother plant already. But the paludarium's thriving. Like I said, it's dusk right now. It's hard to take a good look at it. But I'll try to show you the water feature and what I've done down here, which is uh, basically allow a lot of the moss just to, uh, just to grow out and uh, overgrow all the rock work and uh, the system itself. And there's a quick look at the paludarium. Like I said, I'd like to do a, a real update in there and show you it with all the brights on and the system really rocking with the, with the waterfall and the drip running. But we'll save that for another day and uh, quickly update the Brashardi colony, which has been incredibly thriving, and uh, show you some of the moss that I pretty much just dumped in this tank uh, from that little 10 gallon that you just saw, and uh, they love it. They love it. They spend so much time uh, in this little moss wall that I've created just by tucking it underneath uh, these rocks here. And a lot of this vegetation uh, really gets mangled by these fish. There's so many of them in here now and they dig a lot of the stems up from uh, the rock strait itself. So a lot of these plants are pretty much just floating here, uh, you know, in the water column and uh, that's how they're surviving. There's not much of a substrate in this tank to begin with. Um, and uh, 
Brashardi will most likely definitely dig it up. They're uh, Ravengers. And uh, what I've done recently is try to add a couple of larger shells and uh, some more hardscape to the bottom of this tank to create more holes and, and more tunnels for them to, uh, to hide and seek refuge and, and safety just because I, there are so many of these uh, the Lamprologus Brashardi in here. This colony uh, is really becoming large and uh, I always see a fresh spawn. They don't seem to uh, want to stop. Um, this is the male now. This was the breeding male that had come up from the previous generation uh, to spawn with who is his mother. And uh, the pair continue to, uh, to grow out all these fish. And I think it's fantastic. Like I said, this, uh, this system has really been fun. The Julies, because they have the room and the habitat, have also done very well. And they've grown out huge. One thing about all my tanks is uh, I think it's pinnacle to, to create habitat, whether you're doing it with plants or hardscape or any kind of, you know, even artificial decor, because uh, the fish will absolutely benefit from it. My style is absolutely, you know, as natural as possible, but there's nothing natural about keeping a box of water with life inside of it. So we kind of have to decide what is natural within the environment we're working in. And uh, my definition of that is whatever the inhabitants live the most healthy in would be uh, considered as natural as possible. And uh, I find a lot of this hardscape and a lot of the dense vegetation and um, you know these conditions help with that. And it's been my method. But there's a green room update, guys. I appreciate you hanging out. I know I haven't posted in a while. And uh, not too much has changed. Like I said, I haven't updated too much stock. And uh, I'm just playing with my projects, playing with my guppies, still growing out the crebensis. Uh, I haven't sold many fish recently, but I do still plan on sending fish out to those who want it. And we'll quickly uh, take a look at the Imbuna because this tank is rocking. I think the five fish in this tank completely balance out this system. And I'll show you guys who's left in here. We got Wally, the Labeotrophius, and Tug, a little Demason eye, Sony, Mr. Man, my Pseudotrophius, and the ACI, who I call Jazz. But these five Beast and Buna have uh, really done well in this tank lately. There's not too much aggression. Uh, the system's very balanced. And uh, as far as escape itself, I finally done at least a, a decent enough job at keeping a rich algae scape and uh, a balanced system with uh, with zero algae anywhere else as far as the walls and the glass and the rest of the tank decor. I enjoy the tank the way it is. It's just the five fish in here and uh, they're truly, you know, my favorite five of all the Imbuna I've kept. So thanks for hanging out guys, I appreciate it. I wanted to make a fish room update, I haven't cruised in a while. And we're all thriving here. You guys have a good one. Take on.